So the latest release of Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw have some pretty cool features. The one that I'm actually excited about that doesn't get much press is the fact that you can open smart objects as layers in Photoshop now. Thank you very much, Adobe. But the one that everybody is talking about is the new denoise AI feature in Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw. The natural question to ask is, is it as good as Topaz denoise or Photo AI? and DxO Pure Raw 3. So that's what we're gonna take a look at in this video. We're gonna compare them using uh, night images and a little bit of wildlife photography. Quick note, I'm not sponsored or affiliated with any of these plugins and programs. This is gonna be non-biased. There's not gonna be any affiliate links or discount codes or anything in this video. I just wanna give you guys some non non-biased information because sometimes it's kind of hard to find on YouTube. Let's jump into it. This is back when I was shooting with a Canon 5D Mark IV and I was shot, shooting this at ISO 8000 trying to keep my shutter speed short because we had this awesome aurora in the background. But as you can see, incredibly noisy. So we're gonna see what the different plugins do with an image that is pretty at a pretty extreme use case like this one. So let's start off with the Lightroom denoise feature. You can do it several different ways. Here in the detail tab, we have the denoise button, or at any time you can just right click, go down to enhance. So here's the new dialog box that it gives us. We only have pretty much a slider for this. So we have this denoise slider here. Um, by default, it's usually at about 50, and you can tell by looking at this preview, that is very, very strong. It's removing a lot of noise, but in my experience, when you're this aggressive, it's typically going to create a lot of artifacts as well. So let's go ahead and dial this down a bit. Let's take it down to, say, 35 and hit Enhance. And you can see that it also gives us this estimated time of 30 seconds. So this isn't a large image at all. So it's kind of it's kind of not ideal that it takes this long for such a small image, but we'll go ahead and hit enhance and we'll see how long it takes. So get ready to start the timer now. Okay, so it has given us our copy of this raw file. You can see that we have these two images here. This is the raw file and this is the noise reduced image. So if we zoom in here, you can see that honestly it's done a pretty good job. If we bring them up and look at them side by side, we have definitely reduced a whole lot of noise. I would say that it's a little aggressive at this level. It definitely makes the image feel a little bit softer. If we look up in our stars, maybe we lost a few stars, but not too bad. So. To have something to compare this to, why don't we go ahead and do the same with uh, DxO Pure Raw now? So we'll go to the raw file, we'll go up to File, Plugin Extras, Process with DxO Pure Raw. This is going to bring up the Pure Raw dialog box. We have a few checkboxes here. We can remove vignetting, remove chromatic aberration, lens distortion, as well as lens softness. I find that lens softness introduced some artifacts. Um, so you have to be careful with this. We'll go ahead and turn it on and we'll leave it set to soft. And then you can change your output file type, where it goes, and that's about it. So when we're ready, we'll go ahead and start processing. We'll start the timer, see how long it takes. So here we go. Okay, so now we have our Pure Raw on the right and our Lightroom Denoise or Noise Reduced Enhanced, whatever they call it, the Lightroom Denoise on the left. And if we zoom in here, we can take a look at these and you can see that the Pure Raw was very aggressive in the noise reduction and we didn't really have any chance to dial in how much noise reduction was being done. And that, that's one of the big downsides to the DxO plugin is that you don't really have an opportunity to dial in the amount of denoise that's being applied. So you can see it's done a good job of getting rid of the noise like entirely, but it's also 
looking pretty smudgy. If you look at in this area of the of the old house, you can see that we can't even see individual boards anymore like we can on the on the version on the left. If we look up at our stars, you can see that we've lost some stars, but there's also some really interesting artifacts. I don't know if you can see it, see them on YouTube here, but we have like little random lines up in this area. Um, we've got some down in here. This was actually in both versions. I think this is a satellite or something. But you can see that there's just lots of weird little lines. And that's something that I've noticed with Pure Raw before is in night sky images in the sky, you end up with a lot of artifacts. And it's just really aggressive with the amount of noise reduction that's being applied. And that's going to be kind of a theme moving forward is that you want to you want to be able to dial in how much noise reduction is being done and you want to blend it into areas that actually benefit from it rather than just blending it in globally to the whole thing. That's the way that I prefer to work. So just so we can compare apples to apples to apples, let's go ahead and do one more where we compare it to Topaz Photo AI. So I'm just going to... Click on the image, again, go up to File, plug in Extras, and then go Process Topaz Photo AI. All right, so once we're open here inside of Topaz Photo AI, you can see that by default, the autopilot settings are set very aggressive. We're removing entirely all of the noise, which is usually not a good idea. You want to need to leave some noise in there just so you have a feeling of sharpness. Also, you can see that it's detected a subject, which kind of changes the amount of sharpness and noise reduction that goes into an image based on what it thinks the subject is. It works great for things like wildlife, but not for landscapes. So I always go into the refine and then I change it to none or leave it to landscape. But a lot of times I just switch this to none and then hit done. That way it's not going to try to do anything fancy with adding more noise reduction or sharpness into some areas of the photo than others. So by default, like I said, it's set very strong. It's selected the strong setting. So we're going to go to normal and then we're going to dial the strength back a bit to where we have a reasonable amount of noise reduction being applied. So I'm just kind of sliding this slider back and forth and trying to find a point where it's still got a little bit of noise, but a much improved result. So it's not too smudgy, hopefully. And then afterwards, I'm just going to hit save to Adobe Lightroom Classic and we'll start the timer. Okay, so here we are back in Lightroom. I've synced the same settings across to this image. And let's go ahead and compare it to the Lightroom denoise and see what the differences are. So globally, it looks good, but even at a global level, the Topaz denoise looks very smudgy in some of these shadows. And if we zoom in here, you can see that even though I've really decreased the amount of noise reduction, it was so aggressive that it, it's really smudgy in some of these finer details. I would always prefer to have a little bit of noise but still have sharpness than to have these really smudgy shadows with no detail at all. Now, you know, this was a really extreme use case and granted everything's going to struggle with something this noisy and underexposed. There's no substitution for properly exposing an image and doing a long exposure in a in a setting like this where you get more shadow information. But if we zoom into the sky area, it looks like we lost a few stars. Like if we look in this area here, we've definitely lost some stars, but not too many. And we don't have any of those weird artifacts that we saw with uh, DxO Pure Raw. So still in all of these situations, I would give the edge to Lightroom. This is really extreme use case. Um, let's try it with another night image. So in a scene like this, the way I usually shoot it is I will do a shorter exposure so I have nice sharp stars. You can see that I shot at 15 seconds, which is about what you can get away with with a 24 millimeter. And then I do a longer exposure where I really get all the shadow information that I can get. So in this scene, 
we have our shadow areas and the shadow areas are usually where you're going to notice the most amount of noise. So let's go ahead and see how the different noise reduction uh, plugins do with a scene like this. So let's start off with the Lightroom denoise and we'll just right click, go to enhance. And just so we can kind of compare it a little bit more closely with the others, let's go ahead and bring up the amount. Let's go up to 50 on this particular one. And we'll hit enhance. We'll see how that looks. We've added the noise reduction with the different plugins. Let's zoom in and see what they look like. So we have DxO on the left and we have Lightroom's noise reduction on the right. And honestly, they both look pretty good. I feel like DxO was a little bit more aggressive with the amount of kind of uh, detail and sharpening that it added afterwards, but it's not a bad result on either of them. We do have some kind of sharpening artifacts being created by DxO around some of these rock formations out in the water. And that's something that you run into pretty often anytime that you have a lot of a lot of sharpening being applied. And you can see that DxO definitely has created some halos and some artifacts around these rock edges. And we do not see that in the Lightroom version. But I think noise reduction wise, they're very, very close. They're pretty much exactly the same. Okay, so let's compare it with Topaz denoise. And we have Topaz here on the left, Lightroom here on the right. Very, very similar results. I actually see a little bit a little bit of noise still in the Topaz version. We have some hot pixels here. I can see a few of them in the Lightroom version, but a few more of them over here on the Topaz denoise version. Also seeing just a little bit of sharpening artifact around the edge of that rock formation again, but we don't see any of that in the in the Lightroom version. And just for reference, this is what the raw file looked like before sending them over. So this is the raw file on the left. This is after the denoise. You can see that it's removed the noise really, really well. So one of the main ways that I really have always enjoyed using Topaz denoise or Topaz photo AI is for wildlife photography. So let's do a comparison with a wildlife image and see what the difference is. Okay, so comparing these, we have the raw file on the right and we have the Lightroom denoise on the left. If we zoom in, you can see that it's done a great job with the noise. The background is very smooth. There's no noise that I can see in the shadow areas of the wings anymore. And it's added just a little bit of detail, not too much. I would say that the Lightroom denoise AI is very tasteful with the amount of detail that it brings in. So if we, let's go ahead and bring up Topaz now, you can see the difference right away that there's a lot of detail that's been added to the bird itself, like in the feather areas. And I think that most of the time that's gonna be a welcome thing for wildlife images. But now that like we're kind of privy to the fact that it adds a lot of sharpening, you can see that occasionally we do get just the hint of a sharpening halo around some of these high contrast areas. It's not so bad in this there, but there is a little bit to be seen. So that's something you want to watch out for with Topaz for sure. So let's compare Lightroom to DxO Pure Raw now. So we'll bring up Pure Raw. Now we have Pure Raw on the right and Lightroom on the left. And Pure Raw has added a ton of extra detail to the bird. And, you know, some in some images, I think that it's going to be too much. But when you look at it globally and you kind of zoom out, I think that that level of sharpness and crispness that is added to the bird is actually very welcome. It's a good thing. Let's see if there's any sharpening artifact. There is a little bit of halo here, a little bit of halo here. It's just one of those things you have to watch out for. And honestly, the right way to do this would be to mask some of it out inside of Photoshop, which brings me to probably my biggest beef with two of these plugins. They can't really be used very well inside of Photoshop because the way that I prefer to work is to do the noise reduction as the last step. The reason for that is because you don't want such an aggressive 
uh, choice being made at the very beginning of a workflow. And right now with both Pure Raw and with Lightroom's Denoise, you kind of have to do it at the very beginning of the workflow. Let me show you why. We've opened our image as a smart object layer. And let's say we want to go in and do our base edits. So I double click our smart object layer. That's going to bring up Adobe Camera Raw. And when we finally get down to the detail tab, we notice that denoise cannot be currently applied to smart objects. That's a really big bummer because that would be such a game changer to be able to have a smart object layer that is just for noise reduction. And the way that I like to add noise reduction is to run it through a luminosity mask. That way it's only going into the deeper shadows of an image and I'm not adding a ridiculous amount of noise reduction to my highlight areas and all those little fine details because it, it, it ruins your sharpness. The only way to use Lightroom's denoise is to do it right at the beginning of the workflow because let's say I create a merge visible layer by going control shift alt e or command option shift e. So we have this layer here and let's say I wanted at the very end of my workflow to do some noise reduction. Normally I would go up to camera off filter or I would go up to Topaz photo AI and I would do a noise reduction layer and in this case we don't even have the option of our denoise AI, so I can't do it to a stamped layer either. The only way to really take advantage of Lightroom's new denoise AI is right at the beginning of workflow, and that's just not a great place to do it, in my opinion, because it's such an aggressive, you know, aggressive adjustment that you don't want to make those big decisions right at the beginning of a workflow, in my personal opinion. It's much better to do those aggressive things like sharpening, cloning out things, or aggressive noise reduction at the end of the workflow. That way it can be tailored to your output. So if you're posting something to Instagram and it's going to be this big, you don't really need to do much noise reduction. But if you're going to print a giant print, you need to do a little bit more because people are going to be standing this close to it. That's the biggest downside that I see with both the DxO Pure Raw and Lightroom's Denoise is that you can't do it at the end of your workflow. Maybe you could find a workaround, but it's going to be too much of a pain. And you can do it, for example, if I go up to Filter, Topaz Labs, Photo AI, I can do my noise reduction with that stamped layer. Now, I feel like Lightroom's noise reduction, the quality of it, is probably better than, photo, than Topaz Photo AI. I like that it can be a little bit more subtle, especially with the details it's adding back. It's not adding any kind of weird, weird artifacts, but unfortunately we can't do it to a smart object layer or a stamped layer, and that's a big problem for now. So for now, if you are a Lightroom user, you have no need to get DxO, Pure Raw, or Topaz Photo AI anymore. I think that the Lightroom's Denoise is absolutely excellent. Excellent, But if you edit in Photoshop, eh, it's not ideal. You're either going to be using Adobe Camera Raw and use the legacy noise reduction layer, or you can use something like Topaz Photo AI to do your noise reduction because it can be done at the end of the workflow where it should be done. I think that Lightroom's new denoise is absolutely excellent. I just can't wait to see it implemented so we can do it on smart object layers or we can do it to a merge visible layer because that would be awesome. I hope you guys are all well and we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, everybody.